Hi, Nuno. Well, Hi there. The first obvious question, why Portugal? Well, I think because it's about time, in the sense that um, Portugal really has a lot of work to do in terms of updating its image and really getting um, more and more music in different styles out to the rest of the world. Uh, because I think it's still a little outdated in terms of uh, you, when you think of Portugal musically, you might think of Fado first. Yeah. And it's not just Fado anymore, so it's, it's about time. And apart from Fado, what, what else is now? I think the, the other answer to why Portugal is the number of music festivals we have. It's a really, really music-loving country, you know, a population of 10 million, about 3 million, uh, or, you know, between 2 and 3 in terms of festival goers, that's, that's a pretty high percentage in terms of um, how many music lovers you have in Portugal, but also the number of festivals in, in terms of everything from different types of festivals, different styles and different sizes. We, we have mega festivals like other countries, we also have really niche festivals uh, pretty much spread out across the land. So, and Has this always been this way? No, I think it's... I, it's it, I think Portugal came late to the um, uh, to the music panorama that we recognize internationally because of course it was a fascist dictatorship until 1974, and uh, you know that meant a lot of music was not allowed, um, and so I think it, it played catch up during the 80s with like a, a sort of new wave scene, and now it's become a real um, amazing. Uh, sort of uh, juxtaposition of different cultures, making new musical genres occur, and I think it's a really interesting time right now, which is another reason why Portugal, because now is a really interesting time there. Can you explain a bit more the, what, what is interesting now about the music scene in Portugal? I think there, there are several interesting music scenes in Portugal in different, in different, uh, in different cities, in different styles of music, but the triangle between Portugal making the bridge between Europe, Africa and America, it, it makes it a real interesting uh, mixture of sounds and, and aesthetics. Um, if you're talking about bands like Batida or Buraca Sound System, um, it, it, that sort of um, African influence mixes in with rock and pop influences. And I think that makes, makes it for a very interesting scene, especially in Lisbon. But then if you go to different cities, you know, in Leiria you have a really interesting indie scene. And in Braga you have like avant-garde experimental art and electronica, you know. Uh, Braga has a festival called Semi Breve, which is a very avant-garde electronica festival. Or the city of Porto, of course, has always had a really good music scene. Guimarães has the West Lab Festival, which is Portugal's first ETEP showcase conference and festival, so it's really kind of decentralized in a way. And you said, well, it's a, it's a triangle between America, Africa and Europe. Um, how come this, this is the case for Portugal? Why not for another country? Well, I think the geography, uh, you know, it's, uh, and also the history, because geographically we are at the western, southwestern end of Europe, Historically, Portugal and Spain have had their backs turned to each other. Portugal was always more allied with England. And so Portugal, from the age of discoveries, kind of went all around the world. So there's all these different inputs that lead to this, to this kind of uh, mixture of, of, of cultures and sounds. Um, and also, it's, it's, a, it's a country where people learn um, about other cultures and learn to speak English very early. Whereas in countries like uh, Germany or Spain or Italy, they subtitle, um, they, they overdub everything inst instead of subtitling. So it, it makes for a good mix of um, potential in terms of whether you're singing in Portuguese and you're singing Fado, that's one thing. But if you're doing pop rock in English, your English is probably going to be a little bit better than some other folks. If you have to name one or two bands that would have the potential to make it across Europe and maybe even the States. Can you name two bands? From the ones this year? Yeah. That because of course in the past Batida um, have done great internationally, Buraka Sound System have done great, um, the legendary Tiger Man does really well in France. I think from this year pretty much all the 21 artists plus the two at the Portugal reception, so we have 23 in total. 
if we do the math that way. But if, uh, all of them have that have this potential. Some have already taken some serious steps in terms of hiring producers like Brian Eno, uh, The Gift, that is, The Gift, uh, have the new record of Brian Eno and Flood doing the mixing. So obviously there's an international plan. Um, they've also built PR teams around the key markets. Um, but then, you know, bands like Best Youth, who, who, of course, if you look at the little hearts on the program, there's a lot of people that really like them. Um, uh, I heard just now that there's a Dutch agency looking at Holy Nothing to take them on for the Netherlands. And they're an agency that has pretty good experience working with bands like Throws in the Shine. And I think, I think it's, uh, it's anyway, every single one of them has this kind of potential. Last question. Uh, how important is Fado still in Portugal? Fado is still very important. And we have Gisela Joel, who I think is an awesome artist because she mixes the traditional aspects of Fado. And she's playing tomorrow at the Stadtschauburg after the Portugal reception. Um, but she does it in a way that is irreverent. It's, it, it doesn't have to be a kind of like stuck in time, dressed in black kind of affair. It, it can be a modern affair with an amazing voice. So I, you know, I think she could be huge. She could be bigger than Marisa or anybody else, you know? She could be bigger than Amalia. Thank you for your time. Thank you guys.